Medlicott, and I have been a gardener for 45 years, but I have been a master gardener, volunteer master gardener in Washington County for just a year. These petunia towers that we're going to teach you how to build today, I've been doing for 15 years with rave reviews from everybody, and I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. <laughs> and this is my partner <laughs> in planting. And I'm Pam Morris, and um, I've been a master gardener since 2017, and prior to that, just really have enjoyed just uh, getting to get in the dirt and anything from vegetables to perennials to annuals. Uh, just is just so fun to see what you can grow and how everything just blooms. So um, Patty was able to show me the her petunia towers last year and we had made some last year and they're just beautiful. They're just different from the different plants you use to um, the way even the colors show up. So we're gonna explain that a little more to you. First, we'd like to start with what kind of planter to use. These are about 50 inches in diameter. You can use any size that you want. And the different materials from a plastic planter to a ceramic or a terracotta. Keep in mind that airflow is more with the terracotta versus plastic or the ceramics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were um, saying you don't have to worry about anything on the bottom, but you also just want to make sure that you have, we're going to show you how you, we're going to put dirt in the bottom, but it still has to drain through. So um, moisture is a part that you're going to want to think about. And make sure that you do have a drain hole on the bottom. If your planter does not have one, you can certainly drill one or two or three in the bottom so that you can let out the extra moisture. And then, because you've got holes in the bottom, you can take just a regular coffee filter and put it in the bottom, or you can use some of the fabric from the landscaping on the bottom. And that's just to keep your soil in, inside of the pot. This one is already filled, and in here there are there's a mixture of rocks and soil on the, the, the bottom three-fourths of the, the planter. And I don't take that out. That is there to stay. Um, and, and then I change the, the soil each year. So in the tower. In the tower, yes. So to get started, first what I did was measure the, the circumference of my pot. Or planter. And then I used a wire and we'll go over cost at the end of all of this stuff. But this is just a fencing. I don't, can you see it okay like that? This is a, a fencing type of wire. And I chose this because it has these nice little open spots that I can cut the fabric and put my plant into it. So I measured it to match my pot. And I I had have these pointy sides here so that when I make the, the circle to go into my pot, I have all of these that I can bend over to keep it together. And this one, I actually cut off um, the bottom of the wire so that I have all these spikes. And then this one, as you can obviously see, has been used from year to year. It's not something that I throw out either. And that's what's nice about once you do build your first petunia tower, you're going to be able to use the supplies year after year. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're having to reinvest in it. Mm -hmm. So then once I have this done, I'm going to push it into the soil from the bottom part of my planter. And then I measured this and I cut the fabric, the landscaping fabric, so that it could go around this. 
Now, I have always put mine on the inside of the wire. Pam last year put it on the outside. And I don't know if there's a better way of doing it. I actually think last night I, re I did a new one and I did take it out. This time did it the way Patty has done it. And it's easier when it's you're easier. putting the plants in to keep it contained. Okay, so then what, what we're gonna do is take the landscaping fabric and we're gonna put it inside of your wire. And then we just, just put it down. And before I get too much further, I, I want to tell you that when you decide if you're going to build a, a two tower, put it where it's going to stay, because this is a very heavy pot to be transporting and moving, lifting up and down. So in the past, I have always built it where it's going to stay for the summer. The other thing we want to point out is that we have a paver stone to put under it so that it's stable and it doesn't tilt at all. So then we've got this down and we're and just going to take a stapler. It's just an uh, easy way to, to secure, secure the uh, landscape fabric to the wire. And just go around so that you are able to have it complete. And then you can trim off the excess fabric, but leave a little bit because it's going to have some give and take as your plants grow and as you plant. And then what I do is I just sutured this in about four spots. And this is because when I was out and the, and the days were a little breezy, I had trouble with the fabric staying in, in a, the spot that I wanted it. And I found that if I sewed it into place, it was a lot easier to work with. Let's see if you can see everything. So we're just going to... Abby, can you show us and describe what you're using to do that? Well, I have a curved needle and this is actually a, um, a needle that I got with my sewing needles. And you can pick it up at, at like a fabric shop. And then I have coat thread, so it's thicker than normal thread. And that's all it is. Okay, thank you. And the curved needle just makes it easier to go in and out. Yeah, I didn't have that last night when I was doing mine and I was thinking next year, I think I'm gonna do that. It worked. It's very slick. Mm -hmm. So you want to do this just like maybe four different places on the wire, just like Patty said, just to hold it in place. And then it, it just keeps it so that you can work with it easier. Then the next thing that we're going to do is add soil at the base. And this is to keep it 
more stabilized. So you're going to fill all around the outside. And there's a maybe about an inch to inch and a half that is between the wire and the planter that she's filling it in. And then when you get done doing that all on the inside, then we're going to start to, to fill in our soil inside of a, a planter. So we're just going to fill it in until we get to the level where we want to start putting in our petunias. The soil that we're using is just a, a potting soil. Um, you can get the moisture uh, soil or, you know, any any brand is fine. Just make sure it's a good brand. You know, a miracle Grow is something we have, but um, it's, it's just a new every year. Right. And you can actually put some slow release fertilizer in this as you were doing it to help fertilize it through the summer. And then you'll want to fertilize about every couple of weeks with some liquid type of fertilizer. So you get more blooms. So we're going to be doing that and we're going to show you how to put your petunias in in this one. You still have the scissors? Okay. So the first time I ever built a petunia tower, I put a petunia in every single one of these spots and it was well over a hundred petunias. And needless to say, it was beautiful, but it was overkill. And one of my girlfriends who was a little more conservative said, I do it every other space. Now I do it every third and it fills in so beautifully. So not everyone, but let's see. So you can see how she's put it here, but as they just start growing and the blooms are, you know, going to fill these spots in by another month, this is just going to all fill in and you're not even going to see the black um, landscape fabric. And then when I cut it, I just go ahead and just do one straight slip. And that's all you need to do. And one of the things that I have found works well for me is if the rooted area of your plant is actually wet or moister, you can squeeze out the excess moisture and it compacts it easier for you to get it through this slit. And you're just gonna tease it through and then I turn it sideways and there's your, your petunia. Okay. Now, um, the way you pick your flowers too, you can do different designs. If you want to do everything all one color, it really um, makes the petunia tower really change. Um, Betty's done it in different ways that she's done jams of it. And some of the pictures that you saw when you signed up for class, you could see just the way they look different. Nothing is right or wrong. It's just the colors and the, and the way you want it to look. One thing that I would caution about colors, I love dark purple. And I did one in purple one year and it really did not show that well. So I would kind of stay away from a dark purple color. But otherwise the bright and vibrant colors are beautiful during the summer. And last year when I made my mother-in-law one, I did the multi colors and she is all about color and she loved it. You know, and sometimes petunias have a tendency to get a little bit lanky. And if it does seem like they're starting to, you know, grow out of their area that you want to just contain it, you can just go to the back and that even promotes more growth. And more blooms, I guess is a good way to say that. Yeah. And, and another thing about petunias, you do need to, um, kind of deadhead them throughout the growing season. And when you do that, don't just take the actual flower out, but take the whole 
stem that that flower bloom is on. And the reason that you want to do that is because this is where the seeds are. And if you leave it go to seed, that plant is going to think it's done blooming. It's done its life job. But if you cut off the flower and take the petiole, then it thinks, oh, I got to make more flowers. Okay. So now um, you can, when I'm looking in, I can see where she had pushed all of the uh, individual petunias in, and now we're going to cover that with more of the potting soil so that the next row will be able to sit on. The first time I did this, I filled it with soil and then hoped <laughs> them in. That, I have been a learn in learning process. <laughs> But you know, wherever you start, it always is beautiful. So don't worry. <laughs> and in the past, when I've done this, I water it as I go layer by layer, but I'm not gonna do that today because it's too heavy to move from here to where I'm putting it, where it's permanent home. So I will give it a thorough watering when it gets in its permanent spot. I was going to say that this landscape fabric, when I was looking at the store, there's different kinds. Some is all almost plasticky. And you do want to have something that has a little bit of strength to it so that you can push the plants through and it doesn't tear it out. And it has air flow to it too. Yeah. Should we do it here? Yeah. Right. Just stay room. And like I said, it works easier if the roots and what the ball where the plant is is wet to get them into the spot where you can pull them through. As we go, if you have any questions, make sure that uh, you can either put it into the chat line or you can unmute and, and ask us also. Okay, guys, here's a question um, asking. Uh, how many plants are usually needed per planter? It really varies. Like Patty said, when she started, you know, you can kind of look at how many of the grids that you have, but I would say it's probably maybe a flat plus a little more. <laughs> this isn't oh. a flat. This is not a flat. Okay. Flat. Um, so maybe you know, like 30, maybe? Um, maybe approximately 30. Okay, and then are you just using a standard petunia plant? They're probably less expensive than the calabrochia, or I don't know how to say that. Well, I actually did a calabrochia this year. I already planted it, 
And those I actually spaced out even further because they're supposed to um, spread about 10 inches wide and 10 inches. So I did even less of them. And next year I'll have something to show you, you know, if we do this again, what that looks like. In the past, I've also done pansies. That was really pretty too. And then I did last night when I was doing mine, um, I, I did a petunia and then I also did, this time I tried impatience. So as long as you have a flower that is going to cascade, it, it really the ideas are gonna be endless. But one nice thing about the petunias, you just wanna make sure that you have something that has a lot of bloom and obviously the flower head is nice and big so that makes it really pretty. So then we're gonna fill in this top space. And then I have um, a watering pipe I wanna show you that makes watering down to the very bottom of this easier. Just two. Yeah. So what I have had for watering down to the very bottom is this PVC pipe that my husband put a stop on the bottom so that when I'm watering it doesn't all just flush right out. <clears throat> but he drilled holes in it so that when it waters, there's water coming out all sides of it. I'm just gonna sink this down kind of in the middle. And in the past, it did get kind of clogged. So I just took it out, rinsed it out with water and put it back in and it worked just fine. And I am going to leave it up about an inch out of the soil on top. So One thing I did is I had a pipe that we just had at home and I, it's, it was probably double that size. And I do have to say, I think the one inch uh, PVC size is a good size. Mine actually kind of spread out and I didn't really like the way that the tower looked as, as much as when you just sink this size in. And I also think it just waters the dirt that much better. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more dirt versus all that. Now, since I've been planting with Pam a year or two, maybe I don't know if I did it before, but I started putting a spike on the top just to give it more height and a little more attractive. So we're going to put that on top. And then you just want to fill in a couple more. And this is what you want. However you help fill, how, how much um, color you want to give to the top, if you want to put a couple, just remember it's going to grow and it's going to fill in. So you can be a little bit on the sparse side and you're going to be fine. And then we're just going to fill in more of the soil. Okay, okay there was another question about um whether you ever try using different varieties in the same tower? Now, do you, mean, do you mean a different type of petunia, like a wave petunia? Completely different plants in the same. Yeah, okay. yeah that's what we were just commenting about when Patty said she has on pansies and they work beautifully. And then I just tried to uh, impatience and um, the calabrachia or the super bells. All of those are all cascading flowers. So if you have one flower that you like more than another, I would go ahead and use that. But do you ever combine a mix, like do a variety of plants? Yeah, and then, you know, when you have it on your deck too, it's just gonna look different than if everything's all uniform and the same. Or color-wise is another way to make it a little bit different. But definitely, it certainly can be any, it doesn't have to be petunias. Nope. And you can, you can mix different types of plants in here so that I have one right now that's calabrachia and petunias. And that, I, 
I think will be oh, stunning really? during yeah. the summer. Yeah. Okay. So that is basically it. Now I have to refer to my, my cheat sheet. As far as costs go. Now the soil I got was 1048 for a the big the big bay. The big bay. And I and I did get it at Costco's or Sam's Club, one of those places. And the flowers are going to differ in price depending on what nursery you go to and what kind of flower that you choose to put in it. So we use this is kind of the size bag that we used. And, and it how did, much did you maybe? Well, it did take one. it did take an entire bag to do one okay. of the the junior towers. And as far as the wire, that was probably the most expensive thing. And, oh yeah. And it's actually fencing wire and I got it at um, Home, Depot. Home Depot and it was $61. And like you can see, I mean, it's gonna, you wanna <laughs> almost go in with friends when you're getting yes. some of these supplies because there's so much, but you just can't buy enough for just one. No. So this is kind of what you can see. And you can see how when she made the tower, she would have cut it so that she ended up having those spikes at the bottom um, and then to the size of the diameter of your pot. Mm -hmm. And so if you go in with friends, you can save on that cost, but also the, the fabric, um, landscaping fabric was just under $13. And that I can use from year to year to year until it gets. And you replace tattered. that. You replace that every year. No, no, I, you no. don't. Okay. No. All right. I, I haven't. This year I replaced everything. So, um, and when you take it out, do you just um, just rinse it off with your hose? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, it's nothing that you, then you just store it with your wire. Yeah. And my pots. And that's basically. Let's see what what we do. Um, in the summer, I do rotate my pot about a quarter of a turn every third day so that sun is getting to all of the plants. And like Pam was talking about, I go out and deadhead, take off the petiole along with the flower and give it some fertilizer every two weeks. But because this is above ground and, and this is allowing air to filter through it, you're going to need to water this frequently. And especially if it's out in the hot sun. And I, I generally water almost every single day. And even spritzing, you can spritz on the outside. Even starting like now, I, it just seems like they just kind of need, like the first couple of days, it kind of takes a hit of getting it in the pot mm -hmm. and, you know, touching it like we did. But then it, even in a, just a few days, it'll just look <laughs> and actually by about two weeks this will be so full that you won't be able to see this black fabric anymore i do think it's a really smart idea like patty said just do a quarter turn every few days mm -hmm. that way you're not having all the light and it just keeps growing evenly on both sides all sides mm -hmm. and then at the end of the season when I take it apart, I use this soil in my gardens or on the lawn to amend the, the soils that are there and then start with fresh soil next year. And again, in the bottom, you don't have to just leave mm -hmm. that. And then um, you can, that way you don't, you have something for the wire to go into, but it, there's nothing in that's really growing in that old soil. Right. And so now, do you have any questions for us? Um, there were a couple questions. Um, could you say again how big the bag of soil was? Let me see. I'll tell you. Yeah, and this already does have um, some of the um, fertilizer in it, so it says feeds up to three months. But the size of this one is 40 dry quarts. Okay, thank you. Um, someone else is asking, can we use tomato wires? I, I haven't, but I don't see why you couldn't. 
you can experiment with it and, and see what works for you. The only I'm only wondering though is you know the size of what's nice about this it gives you mm -hmm. a real guide to where you're gonna go with your next cut where a tomato wire might be kind of big. What do you think for that? They I can, mean they can try you can it. Try it though. There's nothing to yeah, yeah say not to. Yeah, and the other thing. If they kind of lean, I don't care because by the time these flowers go in, you're not going to see them. <laughs> Gives a character. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have another question whether the fabric needs to be replaced each year? No, well, I haven't replaced it every year. Um, if if it looks good, I will use it again next year. Otherwise, no, I don't replace it every year. I'm very much a conservative saver and don't throw things out until they absolutely are way past repair. Mm -hmm. You know, one other thought that I had, the way we were talking, how you really can make these towers to what you want, if it's a plant or the color, but you also can make it the size different. Mm -hmm. So let's say you wanted it to be a little bit shorter, you know, that's fine. Um, if you just wanted it half this tower, if you wanted to have less of the amount of plants, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you can make it kind of as much or as little as you want. And the other thing when uh, Patty said that she didn't start with uh, the towers to put a spike in and now she had, and um, there's other things you can put on top too, as far as I had put some of that King Tut grass um in mine and we're gonna find out what that looks at, like this year yeah. so again the ideas are just endless um, any questions sure. uh Kristen is asking about how tall are the towers you do hmm. well, good let's question get our stick out It's about 31 inches tall from the top to the bottom of the planter. Okay, and what is the height of the fencing? Say again? The height of the fencing? Oh, oh. oh. it's almost about half. It's almost about, you know, and that is a good question because we were talking about this. You do. You want it to look pleasingly when you look at it too, so that the tower does have kind of this evenness. Or is it about double? Or these about are double? these are about two feet tall. Okay. The amount of wire that I have used is about two feet. And then remember, you're going to put it in so that two rows are going to be inside the actual pot just to hold it tight. Mm -hmm. Now, in years gone by, I have not had trouble with it not being stable, um, but they can be a little tipsy top if you don't get them in place and on something that's stable. So careful if you're moving them. Good recommendation, like Patty said, put it where, build it where you're gonna leave it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's all the questions we have in the chat. Um, don't be shy, anyone. These are master gardeners here. You know, you could go off topic. If you have any questions yeah. you want to ask us about uh, plants, certainly feel free to. Um, okay, so someone's asking again about the size of the fencing, um, saying if the fencing was two feet, how did you get 31 inches? for the total height of the planter. Uh, the pot. Yeah, I'm measuring from the bottom of the pot to the top of the fencing. Right, so maybe you just want to, like how big is the pot and then how how high above that oh. is the fencing? Oh, okay, I, I can do that, yeah. And everyone is gonna be a little bit different. The one we're using here, the pot is 14 inches tall. And then I have, we have, um, 18 inches of the fencing showing. So we've actually sunk six inches. Yeah. Does that answer your question? 
Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's really a fairly simple project, but it has, it has been such an enjoyable planter for me to have my neighbors, my friends, my relatives all make very nice comments about how beautiful <laughs> they are all, and they last all summer. I don't take them down until sometime in October, but they are beautiful all summer long. Yeah, it's really, that's the nice part about it. It's not like you're having to replant or once you get it going. And even, you know, when you're building these and let's say one of them doesn't live, just say the root or something got tore too much or it just didn't live. Don't worry about it because it's going to, the rest of these are going to fill in and mm -hmm. it's very forgiving. And actually, in all the years that I've done it, I think I've had two, two plants that didn't survive once I put them in. Yeah, mine were fine with yeah. all that. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. I don't think we have any more questions, um, okay, but well, they look beautiful. It's great timing here now, right? With Mother's Day coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah yes. that's what I was going to say. Now you guys maybe will want to go to uh, buy, buy some plants and uh, make it for either yourself for Mother's Day or um, give it as a gift. So thanks for signing up for the class. And yes. uh, we sure are happy that you wanted to join us. Yes, thank you for joining us. All right, thanks everyone. Enjoy your Saturday. <laughs>